everyone welcome to the tutorial 1.2 in which we are going to discuss a very famous pro uh, problem which is spiral order matrix 1 so let's understand the problem statement first then we'll look at a sample test case to understand what the input and the output format is and then finally we'll discuss the logic in order to approach this particular problem so so the problem statement is given a matrix of m into n elements which is uh, where m are the number of rows and n is the number of columns we need to return all the elements of the matrix in a spiral order so this question has been asked in various good companies which are microsoft jp morgan amazon flipkart and adobe so i'll just discuss uh, the problem statement by first explaining you the problem statement with the help of an example so for example if this is the input array which is m cross n m is the number of rows which is 3 and n is the number of columns which is also 3 here so we need to print this particular matrix in the spiral order so now what is spiral order we need to start from the left topmost element which is 1 and then we need to move spire in the spiral order as the name suggests so what would be the spiral order first we'll move right so 1 2 3 gets printed then we'll move down as we need to cover the spiral order so 6 9 get printed then we move towards left so 8 7 gets printed and finally we move towards right so 4 5 gets printed so this way this is how the spiral order traversal of a matrix is defined first we move right then down then left then we continue so and on so forth as soon as uh, until the array elements gets traversed completely sorry the matrix array elements gets traversed completely so let's discuss the logic and then we'll come up with the program of our own which uh, i'll be explaining you line by line uh, so let's first understand the logic so the logic is we need to maintain a direction variable to maintain the direction to move in so as you know that sometimes we need to move in right we sometimes move down sometimes left and sometimes up so that's why we need a direction variable in order to understand which is the next direction we should be moving in so as the problem suggests we need to start from the top leftmost corner so starting from the topmost left corner the sequence of direction should be right down left top why right down left top again right down left top and so on and so forth we need to traverse the entire matrix in the spiral order so this is the sequence of direction that we should follow first right then down then left and then up and continue moving in this way so keep moving in the above order each time decrementing or incrementing the current row column index so this particular third point is the most crucial point here each time we move in the particular direction we need to increment or decrement the row index or column index accordingly so how so this uh, i'll be covering in the programming section to the live code for this program so let's first declare the header file it's stdc plus plus dot h using name space std okay so let's first write the main method in which uh, we need to take uh, we need to take input matrix from the user so int main let's return zero here okay so let's uh, define a particular matrix here which we will give as input to our method so v let's take one two nine as input as discussed in the previous example let's refer to example first row is 1 2 3 second is 4 5 6 third is 7 8 9 so 1 2 3 4 5 6 7 8 9 okay 
so this is the input matrix that we are going to uh, call a method with so let's make a method and call it so let's make it spiral order let's send a matrix okay so let's define this particular method of our own spiral so it will take vector of vector of int as uh, the as the input parameter now let's uh, first take into consideration the output matrix that we are going to print as we are required to print a list of integer in the form of a vector in the spiral order okay so this would be the output array uh, sorry output vector let's first calculate the number of rows which would be m dot size here let's define it as a and matrix as a okay so a dot size this will give us the number of rows similarly a of zero dot size will give us the number of columns so we have taken the number of rows and number of columns as uh, n and m respectively now let's define some variables which i'll be explaining you which represents what in as we move ahead in this lecture so t equals to 0 b equals to n minus 1 okay so what i have done i have taken l to represent the left direction r to represent the right direction t to represent the top direction and b to denote the bottom direction so as discussed that we need to take care of four corners here left right top bottom okay so these four variables are representing left right top bottom respectively now let's dis uh, define a character dir to represent a direction we need to move in so we'll initialize it with r as initially we need to move in the right direction okay so that's why this is as r why l equals to zero because the topmost row which is uh, sorry the topmost uh, sorry the leftmost column that's why l equals to zero why m minus one because the rightmost column that's why m minus one why t equals to zero because the topmost row which is t equals to zero and why b equals to n minus one because the last row so n minus one so this is how we have uh, initialized our variables now let's write the most important logic so till when do we need to traverse the uh, complete matrix until and unless l is less than or equals to r and t is less than or equals to b so what does this refer to uh, we need to keep traversing until we have traversed the complete matrix okay so as we are moving in left as well as top or bottom or right all these four directions so the terminating condition would be while l is less than or equals to r and and top is less than or equals to bottom why so because until these four turn out to be at the same point we need to keep traversing the matrix now let's write the logic then i'll explain you why it is working so so if direction is right so if we are moving in right what we need to do so when we are traversing in the right direction okay so we need to traverse from the leftmost column to the rightmost column okay so hence our loop would be for int i equals to l i is less than or equals to r because we need to move to the rightmost column and each time we'll move right so we'll increment the column number and what we need to do when we are traversing in this direction we just need to push this particular element onto the vector okay because we need to traverse in this direction and output should be in this way one two three so one two three so that's why just v dot push back just put this element as soon as we traverse it so what this particular element would be as we are traversing a particular row which is the th row as we are starting from the top so a t and i so your t represents the rowth number so we are traversing from the th like the topmost row and i represents the column that we are visiting 
so column is 0 1 2 here and the row is 1 okay so this is how we have written the uh, this particular uh, part to move to the right direction now let's discuss what should happen next so when we have traversed the incomplete right direction what we need to do we need to traverse left we need to traverse down okay so how to represent down we'll just set we'll just set a, a variable direction variable to what to down okay in order to represent that next we need to move down and what we'll do we'll just increment t plus plus so why t plus plus because from next time whenever we visit the row we need to avoid revisiting this row again so our top becomes this are you getting it our top becomes this as our metric space remaining is this as we have already traversed this particular row so that's why d uh, uh, direction would be down as after right we need to move down and why t plus plus as we need to move down uh, because we need to uh, mention that we have already uh, traversed this particular row so don't visit it again so that's why our boundary topmost boundary becomes the next particular row which is just below it so now let's follow uh, what we'll do when the direction is down so else if direction is down which we represent by d so let's just match okay so this will come just outside the for loop okay now let's indent it okay so else if this will come as the end of while loop this okay so else if the direction is down so when we are moving towards down from where to where we do do we need to traverse from the topmost row to the bottommost row so hence the loop would be for int i equals to t i is less than or equals to b i what i plus plus because we are moving down so we need to increment the row number from this to this to this okay so we are moving down so we increment the row number at every instance so what will come here so while we are moving down we just need to push this element as done here so v dot push back what we dot push back a of what so let's understand what should come here as we are moving down so the column remains same but the row keeps changing so the row keeps changing that's why a of i and the column remains the same so which is the column it is the rightmost column okay so that's why r will come here so we have done this particular part and just as we know that after moving down we need to traverse left so let's let's uh, uh, initialize our direction to left as next uh, direction would be the left direction so this is what we have done and when we have already traversed this particular column so we need to move our rightmost boundary towards left towards this particular column 258 because we have traversed this column so how do we do it by just decrementing sorry by just decrementing r r minus minus so r minus minus means we have moved towards left we have decremented the value of r in order to indicate that we have already traversed the rightmost column and now the uh, the column just before it becomes the rightmost column the rightmost untraversed column okay so that's why r minus minus so let's just as we have done it for uh, right and then bottom sorry right and then down so let's do it for left and up so i'll just copy and paste this particular part and we'll modify it accordingly so let's follow else if and else if. okay so what's next when we have came down so we need to move in the left direction so else if the direction is left so what do we need to do when the direction is left when direction is left we need to traverse from the rightmost col uh, from the rightmost column to the leftmost column okay so we need to traverse so when we are moving left we need to traverse from the rightmost column so where are we here we need to traverse from the rightmost column 
so greater than or equals to l we need to move towards the leftmost column and each time we will decrement the column because we are moving towards left so each time we are decrementing the column number here okay so this is what we have done and finally we need to push back what as we are traversing in a single row but the column keeps changing so row is the bottommost row so b here and i here okay so this is uh, the code for moving left and after moving left what we need to do we need to move up okay so that's why we update the direction to up and when we have traversed this the bottommost row we need to uh, change the bottom to the row above it okay so that's why b minus minus okay so just have a look at it on your own once again and you will understand the logic here and finally for moving towards up when the direction is up we'll just use u here when the direction is up we need to traverse from the bottommost row to the uh, sorry from the bottommost row to the topmost row so that's why from i equals to b to i is greater than or equals to t i minus minus because we are moving up so we are decrementing the row number and as it is a row number so i and left as we are traversing the leftmost column here and finally after moving up we need to again continue this process so after moving up we need to move right so let's reinitialize it the direction variable after moving up we need to move right so let's set it right and when are we when we are moving up so we need to make sure that we don't make use of this column once again okay so that's why l plus plus why l plus plus because we are setting this particular column the one towards right of it as the next column for the leftmost boundary so this is the thing and if none of these cases match so else part else break so if none of the cases match just break the code here now let's just print out the vector in order to check what's happening so for int i equals to 0 i is less than n i plus plus for okay so let's ignore this part as we need to print the final value in the v vector okay so the number of elements in v would be n into m for int i equals to 0 i is less than n into m i plus plus c out v of i separated by space so let's see what the output is okay compiled successfully let's run it okay so let me remove this part So as you can see 1 2 3 6 9 6 9 8 7 4 5 1 2 3 6 9 8 7 4 5 so this is how we have completed the code so you guys could refer to this to understand it briefly thanks for watching